half a day. Lesor Mamai, good morning and welcome to your house chamber to today's session. To all those in the viewing public on social media and on cable. I now call this six day third regular session to order. Please let us all rise for a moment of silent prayer. Thank you, everyone. I now recognize the clerk to please call the roll. Representative Adda. Representative Valdan. Here. Representative Fato. Present. Representative Benevetti. Yeah, yeah. Representative Angelo Komatsu. Present. Representative Diego Komatsu. Present. Representative Joel Komatsu. Yeah, yeah. Representative Vicente Komatsu. Present. Representative Kostru. Sigat. Yeah. Representative Joseph Flores. Present. Representative Marissa Flores. Present. Representative Manglonia. Representative Ogo. Present. Representative Omar. Present. Representative Probes. Present. Representative Sablan. Representative Class. Present. Mr. Speaker. Present. Representative Yangtamai. Representative Yumo. Mr. Speaker, 15 members are present and five members are absent. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, with 15 members present, that uh, constitutes a quorum to move forward. Please let the record reflect that Representatives John Paul Sablon, uh, Thomas T.J. Manglonia, uh, Ralph Yumo, Roy Adda, and uh, Denita Yangtamai are hereby excused for today's session. Thank you, Clerk. And with that, we move down to item number two, public comments. And the podium is open. You'll be given five minutes. Please uh, keep your comments uh, related to the uh, what's on the, today's agenda. Uh, please uh, state your name and your uh, the entity you represent. Thank you. Podium is open. Do I, do I have to press it? Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is David Berger. I'm a certified public accountant. I've been in CMI since May of 1990, so getting close to 34 years. Um, I'm here on behalf of, I guess, my client base. Um, we, ha I'm sure we have over a thousand clients. Uh, so I have uh, just three talking points on the bill. First is on business gross revenue tax uh, business gross revenue tax on investments. Uh, as long as I've been here in the CNMI, I've never seen an investment firm set up an operation here. Uh, and I think that the reason for that is because of the way our BGRT law is is written. Uh, investment firms, companies that make their money on buying and selling securities simply cannot pay 5% of the selling price of every transaction. They don't, uh, investment firms don't always make a profit when they sell a security. They might make a loss. But as we sit here today, 5% of the selling price of the security. Uh, and then my, my proposal in, in talking to various people out here is that why don't we figure out the trading gain for the year, get all the gains and losses, put it all together, Here's the net gain, which is actually what will go on your income tax return. And let's impose BGRT on the net gain. So I, I think that's the proposal. Uh, I support the imposing BGRT on the net gains. And I think that we should target investment companies, hedge funds, pension funds, trusts, in investment companies. Then uh, an, another uh, topic about BGRT is on the sale of real property. I have verbal understanding with CNMI Revent Tax and legal counsel for Revent Tax that 
let, let's say you have a commercial building or a residence that you're renting out. That is your income producing asset and you are in the business of collecting rent. If you sell that asset, it kind of fails to meet the definition of a business, which is an activity that's regularly carried on for profit. If you sell your income producing asset, you have no income. So I don't think that meets the definition of business. I don't think BGRT should impose on that. I have that understanding with revenue tax. Uh, I think it would be great if we could have a regulation to, to clarify you sell your income producing asset, you don't pay BGRT on that. Lastly, um, the sourcing rule under the tax law on capital gains. There is a tax, there's a, a law in the CNMI that was called the Tax Source Act of 1987. It's codified in 4 CMC Division 1, Section 1712. That law prevents taxpayers from sourcing their capital gains in the CNMI for a period of 10 years after moving into the CNMI. Uh, as a reminder, I, you know, I've been here almost 34 years. There was a gentleman named William Millard that owned a company called Computerland and he moved to the CNMI in 1987. He uh, sold his shares in computer land for, I think, $250 million. And at that time, 1987, uh, Mr. Larry Hilblum was already a presence in the CNMI. Now, it's my understanding. I don't, you know, I can't tell you if it's gossip or if it's fact, but it's my understanding that the Tax Source Act of 1987 was put in place at the suggestion of Larry Hilblum to prevent Bill Millard from getting a tax break on the sale of his stock. So, you know, they had some kind of a misunderstanding or friction and, and that's what happened. So under the uh, NMTIT, which is the Internal Revenue Code of the United States as adopted here, Capital gains are sourced where the taxpayer is. Now that's, uh, you know, for securities and uh, everything except real property. The sourcing of the gain on real property is where the real property is located. So if you're selling a building in California, that's never going to be seen in my sourced income. But if you move here with a portfolio of investments under the current law, you have to wait 10 years before you can sell any of those investments and call it a CNMI sourced gain, which is, you know, that's not what the Internal Revenue Code says. They have something uh, in the code about expatriation to avoid tax, but nobody's expatriating. Uh, if you got an individual that comes from California to CNMI, they're not giving up U.S. citizenship. They're just moving here. We think it's a good idea if we could repeal that section 1712 in its entirety. Um, I think we are waiting for legal counsel for revenue tax to weigh in on uh, whether this is a problem or not. But if we, if we could scrap that, then people could bring their portfolio here, maybe retire here and keep doing their trading activities or whenever they sell, they can source the gain here and get a rebate on it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berger. And just for a clarification, are you referring to a particular House bill uh, on the agenda? Oh, 23103, right? I mean, I, that's what I'm Sorry. assuming. That's what I'm assuming. Just for uh, clarification, so that when we move further with that bill, there's a, we can connect your, your comments to that, to that legislation. Thank you. Okay. And, and if you have anything written, you can submit it for the record. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Berger. The podium is still open. Uh, again, you'll be given five minutes. Uh, please please uh, stick to the topics in the agenda and state your name and the entity you represent. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Mr. Speaker and honorable representatives. My name is Vin Armani. I'm the founder of Badger LLC, a software company operating in CNMI since 2021. 
Today, I'm honored to have the opportunity to give public comment to this distinguished body, not only as a business owner and entrepreneur who believes in the promise of mutual prosperity for CNMI and members of the global digital economy, such as myself, but also as a husband and father who has made the choice to raise my family in the Commonwealth. Specifically, I want to amplify a bill being introduced today, HB 23103, to amend 4 CMC section 1305 to exempt export service export services and the sale or exchange of securities and other similar assets from gross revenue tax. My deeply held belief is that this bill represents the most concrete alignment possible between potential individu individual and business investors currently not domiciled in CNMI and the government of CNMI. It is to continue to draw positive attention to such actions, actions that serve to sustainably grow and diversify our economy by leveraging our existing resources that I come before you today. Next week, my company, Badger LLC, is formally launching our new project, the Saipan Team. Our website, saipan.team, provides a portal through which digital nomads, remote workers, startup internet businesses, and big tech financial executives can get all of the necessary resources and support to domicile in CNMI and begin contributing to our tax base. I'm personally one of these people, so I know the value of CNMI. I know that with even the minimal raising of awareness, our Commonwealth can become a hub in the digital economy. With the Saipan team, we're taking these steps on our own in the private sector, and we believe we can do so profitably while benefiting both the CNMI and the investors we are introducing to the Commonwealth. I know that our efforts can be magnified many times, however, if the attention of our political and governmental leaders can be focused on this economic activity. The passing of HB 23103 will carry significant persuasive power for business owners deciding whether or not to relocate to CNMI. The passage of this bill represents a clear signal that the leaders of our Commonwealth, including the members of this august body, are willing to form economic and cultural partnerships with members of the global digital economy. HB 23103 is crucially important because it fixes two bugs in the current Commonwealth gross revenue tax rules as Mr. Berger said, that are hindering the ability of CNMI to attra attract exactly the type of taxpayers that would be the best fit for our economy and culture. We don't often think about these types of businesses. One of the reasons we don't think about them is because out of sight, out of mind, they simply cannot do business here. HB 23103 fixes that. Due to CNMI's generous NMTIT tax rebates, the corporate income tax rate here is somewhere around 11% without any deductions. It's 50% rebate on the IRS corporate income tax rate of 21%. That makes CMI's, CNMI's tax rate more attractive than any of the 50 US states. So why don't more US businesses, especially those with the highest profits, move to CNMI? Take the example of a software business like mine that takes on contract work to build digital products and services. Almost all of the expenses for such projects consist of salaries, high salaries, of developers employed to do the work. The margin, the amount added on top that the business actually earns as revenue after paying salaries, is regularly in the range of 15%. Even if this 15% markup is all profit, given CNMI's gross revenue tax rate of 5%, such a business would have an effective income tax rate of 33%, which is 3% higher than California which is considered one of the states with the highest tax burden for businesses. A business would be better off tax-wise domiciling in any U.S. state, a business like mine. Let's not even mention Puerto Rico, which already made export services almost completely tax-exempt all the way back in 2012. So CNMI simply cannot attract such software businesses. That's just one example close to my heart. It's good to note for context that the two companies with the highest market capitalization in the world, Apple and Google, are software companies. By exempting export services where income is derived completely from customers outside of the Commonwealth, bringing completely new revenue to our islands, HB 23103 will allow CNMI to become top of the list for U.S. domiciles of software companies. This is especially true now, a time when physical location has become almost inconsequential for software companies, and both customers and employees are remote from corporate headquarters. In fact, more than 80% of U.S. professional software developers currently work completely remote. The same general principle holds true for the other item HB 23103 addresses, as Mr. Berger said, gross revenue tax exemption for revenue from sales of securities. As it stands, any business that trades securities, such as private equity firms and hedge funds, simply cannot domicile in CNMI, since even when a business sells assets at a loss or with a very slim margin, the current gross revenue tax rules would require the company to pay 5% of the money received from the sale in GRT. 
This makes the economics of being domiciled in CNMI completely untenable for companies that trade in securities. As it stands, CNMI is receiving essentially zero revenue from the classes of business that would be subject to the exemptions in this bill. Enacting HB 23103 will allow even my company specifically to facilitate the attracting and retaining of businesses in these industries, increasing the tax base. This is the wonderful situation that sometimes occurs when a government can generate more tax revenue by reducing the tax rate. The bill introduced today is critical Sir, for our uh, economic recovery. Sorry to interrupt, but if you but, can wrap it up. Yes, in, indeed. Uh, so I just want to thank you in advance for taking the first and important step to help us diversify our economy. And I look forward uh, to working with you to move these initiatives forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you'd like, you can submit your public comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, podium's open. Please state your name and the entity you represent. Thank you. Be given five minutes. Esteemed members of the House, my name is Joshua Cook. I represent Pacific Pact, a consulting company I established last year. I was brought to the CNMI because of my background in leadership, technology, and taxes. I started by helping design the initial user experience for the CNMI's upcoming tax software. I've since moved on to work on other solutions for the CNMI. Aside from operating the consulting business, Pacific Pact, supporting local businesses and the government, um, especially the Secretary of Finance Office, I'm a 50% shareholder in a multi-million dollar e-commerce business. In the last three years, I've looked at all possible methods to move our operations here to avail of possible tax benefits. I've spent countless hours and dollars getting professional advice from some of the best tax professionals on and off island, one of which was Mr. Berger. Ultimately, my business partner and I concluded that it did not make financial sense to operate our business in the CNMI. As an example, as you've heard other examples, I'll make this brief. If I sell a million dollars worth of product, I also incur other expenses, manufacturing, shipping, marketing, customer service, and other operations. That $1 million in revenue would turn into, say, $100,000 in profit. While the BGRTs are only 5%, we're looking at 5% of the million dollars in revenue, not the $100,000 in profit. And so the effective tax rate is much higher for me. Uh, this bill, the HB 23103, um, is an important step, a critical step for CNMI in attracting businesses in the multi-billion dollar industry that is e-commerce. And um, I just wanted to stand up here and share some of my, my experience. I love the CNMI. I'm planning to stay here for a long time. And I'd love to also um, see the, the CNMI benefit from my business operations. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. Floor is still open. Good morning. Alfredes and Turo, buenas. Honorable members of the esteemed 23rd Northern Marianas Legislature. My name is Anthony Torres. As a commissioner of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, I stand before you today, not only as a public servant committed to rehabilitation and justice, but also as an entrepreneur investor, and advocate for economic growth and prosperity in our beloved islands. The proposed House Bill 23-103 Digital Economy Advancement Act Amendment present a unique and timely opportunity for us to embrace innovation, harness the power of technology, and pave the way for a prosperous future for all residents of the CNMI. By advancing this bill, we signal to the world that our islands are open for business, entrepreneurship, and digital transformation. Now is the time to put our CNMI on the map. 
A thriving digital economy holds the key to unlock, unlocking new avenues of growth, creating employment opportunities, and positioning the CNMI as a competitive player in the global marketplace. By providing tax incentives to digital businesses, we not only attract investment and talent, but also foster a culture of innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship that is essential for sustainable economic development. Imagine a future with our children, brothers and sisters coming back home to great paying jobs and contributing to the growth and greatness of our Commonwealth. You all have the power to make this happen, just like our forefathers did when they wrote and established our covenant. And Governor Palacios and Lieutenant Governor Apatang's social media posts on Instagram about Covenant Day earlier in the week. They indicated the covenant underscores principles that protect the safety and well-being of our people, promote common health and welfare, promote free enterprise and the advancement of economic development, promote justice, expand educational op opportunities for our students, and most importantly, improve the overall standard of living for each individual who calls these islands home. The spirit and letter of the covenant are even more important and relevant now as the CNMI confronts economic hardships, geopolitical tensions, and other challenges. This is a chance for all these deliverables to ensue. This is a call to action to make things happen. My vision for a growing economy in the CNMI is one that empowers our local businesses, nurtures our workforce, and creates a business-friendly environment that supports growth and prosperity for all. By embracing the digital economy, we can diversify our economic base, reduce dependency on, on traditional industries like tourism, and future-proof our economy against global shifts and challenges. But beyond the economic benefits, my vision extends to building a more inclusive, equitable, and sustainable economy that uplifts all members of our community. Through the opportunities presented by the digital economy, we can bridge divides, create pathways to success for underserved populations and ensure that no one is left behind in our pursuit of growth and progress. I urge each of you to support the Digital Economy Advancement Act Amendment, not just for the economic advantages they offer, but for the transformative impact they can have on the lives of our, of our residents and the future of our islands. Saipan, Tinian, Luta, Northern Islands, Together, let us unite our islands and build a stronger, more resilient, and more dynamic economy that benefits every individual, family, and community across the CNMI. Thank you for your attention, your dedication to our islands' development, and your commitment to realizing a vision of economic growth that uplifts us all. Sijus Masi para itendi mizu zani dedikasyon para isla nita. I de boton mizu na un de para na para imanaolek ekonomia zam para imanagov tautota. Together, let us continue to protect, preserve, and enhance our Commonwealth. Let us embrace the digital future and chart a course towards a brighter, more prosperous tomorrow for the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Nayanmo sankata na islas Marianas, dankulo na si Jusmasi Giloso, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Torres. <clears throat> Podium still open? Test, sorry. All right. Again, you'll be given five minutes. Please state your name, the entity you represent, and try to keep your comments um, related to the today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Half a day and good. Half a day and good morning, uh, Mr. Speaker, and members, uh, Nisti, member Nisti, na honorable Pisan uh, Congreso. Guahu si Liana Manglonya sa Van Hoff Schneider, guahu gumelului imatua Council for Native Chamorro Advancement. Gagizugini pa bi. Quintusiam zu didi put e House Bill 23104, uh, ni my sponsor, guess uh, Congressman BJ Acto, uh, u supopota isti na House Bill sa gofim potantisti para i retirees. Uh, Sisus masi para todu uh, uh, Congressman BJ's and the members ni my sponsor isti. 
Logi mismo ora lo que malago zo pa bifay sin hamzo ko sinya in na sauno nu mana holo me jisha iritirao ni man mana fan apapasi pa ko na tempo kana trecento sista cuatrocento nu pesos kada quinze dias mana fan susua ginin i isonya retirement pension. Uh, Estin na klasi sa tasangan na uh, matuazo gi mapos gi sanilo na guma zengini. Uh, importante na taatan ti todo debi gi magay pufan maposi gi sa guaha siya gi member. Membro siya ni man maritiro. Ni man man manyuli sa lapi man man adzo. Ni po po man afang qualify siya alam po man afang umlat alam gi retirement. Lahat sino. Ni guaha siya member ni man former members of the legislature. Ito siya, ilalik ko man na perfecta, ito siya i Water Watch, ni i CUC, no Water Power Plant. Ito ang guasha lo kig enforcement. Debi na amzun, ato na zina lista, sa gwa lista gi, za sa sanga na office i overpayment. So, gagawang zuna po, fa buwa considera. Si Jesus Marcin Esti. Yotu lo kig no malago zuna para ta ato na zina i i house bio E23, esteem and a hollow, esteem 23, 104, in section 5, you need to see the clarification. Then, you know, the repayment, I mean, it's just my deferred gives us the benefit, you need to see that, come off economic development, you need to see that, 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 Gua clarification di section two and five, na asasangan general, and then abira katu selapik katu gi appropriating body para isipan and legislative delegation. Apo fabel mod na gua di di clarification apa kami kelingnya no. Jadi mismo ora loki ni, nu kosinya in atan ni, in nasau no man mamai la, perubahan ni na posisi i retirees ni zaman ma man mafekta sa importanti na perubahan maju resti sya. Sa tisonya, untung aja kaya so. Iso i pension plan manager, iso i administrator, Northern Mass Retirement Fund administrator, iso i trustees, i retirement fund, ni siya mo certify. Nung tiso niya si tao to, basta man motay, sa ti dinansi, si suta ni si pata na dinansi. Lastly, malago sa pabisangin po din sa Senate Communication 2381, yun yun ni last na session. Ista gwa appointment si Senator Donu, Senator Selina, Senator Carl King Neighbors and Senator Bo, Senator Bo. Uh, importante na anin ata ni Stini, po favor considera, peren na guaha loki legislatura, legislation, ni peren uh, aposito ti izi i Maranas Land Trust no funding desta man manahono magi over 80 million. Za intutun tamano peren aposito ti i beneficiaries ni uh, para izonyan no malok stimulus. At the same time, sinyan si listi 15 million sa gagigini gi communication ni na peren repeal is repeal and reenact gagigini sa na communication no pero in na naklo tati sa tutun ni 15 million ni pinagwa stimulus ni pareto tuto ano intingwa na gwa petition gano uzun manalililiko jaman seryoso ito ito ay ino mas Jesus Marci no polo sa belief is oku balance of my minutes para si Richard Jesus Marcy, Mrs. Hofschneider, uh, the floor is still open. Um, Afarei para todos os amigos, de maneira que o membro do público é um estilo honorável body. Minha minha mãe aqui vem de Paulo, da minha sister audience, minha mãe aqui, de reconhecer se Commissioner Torres, da Marco Funa Birga, tá tudo para fazer tudo aqui também nota. Se pegar um dia mais tudo já está bem visita, o que eu fiz não amo. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. No, bem fino inglês Paulo, né? Sa no Malago zona, e tá o Tony, tá o Tubongo fino de Samoro, né? Fino tá o Tano, de maneira que não vai no I'm a song in English. Good morning, Mr. Speaker and member of this honorable body. And hopefully, then you know, so Schneider, a mogul thing for everyone. First of all, my name is Richard Antalan Hof Schneider. I was born in Saipan in Dr. Torres Hospital, now the college, and I was raised in Tinan all my life in the country living, you know, fishing, ranching, 
hunting coconut, hunting pika, tony toro, everything. And Talaza, when I came back from the University of Hawaii. Uh, so I speak as a Tototano, you know. First of all, um, I'm a private citizen, as an advisor too, to the Matua Council for Native to More Advancement. And you know, advancement means uh, anything. Environment, jobs, business opportunity, like what there's, there's, these people are just came about the you know software industries. I got to study more because they're talking about capital gains and BGRT. So I got to study them, what they're talking about. But I support the technology. Anyway, uh, first of all, um, this discussion, Mr. Speaker, and the author of this uh, House Bill 23101, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the freshman congressman from uh, Kamachu, Angelo Kamachu. Um, I'm no, from Precinct 5. I'm trying to memorize there. Is Mr. Kamachu here, uh, present? Yeah, Mr. Kamachu. Uh, with all due respect, Mr. Kamachu, uh, first of all, I oppose your bill 100%. Uh, number one, uh, the uh, this bill is it has to do with you know our good attorney here, senior attorney, uh, Tahiron, the 200 mile EEZ that was litigated many years ago, you know, uh, several several decades ago, under former governor Teno, late honorable Teno, and all the way up to now. Uh, this bill is, if you pass this bill, this member of the House and of the Senate, it will make it harder for the indigenous people, the Tototano, and I'm a Tototano here. I'm not an NMD. I'm not a Northern Miranda's descent. I don't qualify. I'm protecting more than Article 11, Article 12. So this body has to protect us more. And it, whether uh, this body returns back in the next legislature or not, this, thing, this, this argument and this uh, push is going to be keep forward. Um, you're going to give the secretary of the uh, DLNR, Mr. Kamatsu, Congressman Kamatsu, the fees and funds, monies for to grant uh, to CMC Division 1, Section, I believe, 2222. Two, two, two. So before I start that, I went back to the definitions. And I went to the definition and said to lease, to permit, to lease permit, and to permit for exploratory licenses for petroleum deposits or mineral deposits or any other minerals to grant license and uh, and permits, you know? This is the Secretary of DLNR. So we must repeal that because I truly believe that's unconstitutional if we go through the uh, United States District Court, Cinema Court, United States District Court and the International Human Rights Commission under United Nations and international law. We have to address Congressman Kamatsu with all due respect when you talk about money coming out from the natural resources, from the land to the ocean, to the air, we have to talk about the indigenous people, the Tototano, Isman Samoru, you know, Sankatana Isla. And uh, this is very important. So this bill is absolutely discriminatory and injustice and giving ultimate authority to the Secretary of DLNR 20 years from now, 30 years from now, as you see the population, the census, and see the migration from Asia, Pacific Islands, all over, and we we are still in this uh, democracy uh, relationship with the United States, there'll be a different makeup of congressmen and senators here in, and governor. So we must act now and protect this because this was never addressed under the United Nations when the United States Trust Territory was negotiating um, around political status and the United Nations, US um, Ambassador Williams uh, the, the, um, they didn't discuss this openly, the 200 mile economic easy. And uh, under the law of uh, convention of the law of the sea. So this litigation, uh, fortunately, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, Delegate Kilili uh, many years ago down in Tinian. I flew down to Tinian to speak with him. Uh, President is my Liana Schneider and uh, the late uh, Mike Sablan and the late uh, Santos and uh, Mike Tano, and uh, in the office of Tinian, uh, uh, U.S. Congress, and we spoke for uh, a good, like, almost an hour, because he was, was going to introduce a three-mile legislation, and we argued, you know, democratically and diplomatically. I said, Mr. Khalili, Congressman, and I, if he's listening, he, he can attest to this. If you're going to introduce something like this three-mile to the United States Congress, then put the res we reserve the right for the 197 miles, and then we can agree for that. 
but he refused. He aligned to all this called paramancy doctrine that was litigated, you know, under the United States federal system, the court. And that's why we're here right now, because he refused. And you know who recommended this? The late Honorable Benjamin Manglonia from Rhoda and the late Honorable Larry Guerrero, the governor, uh, about this, uh, the right to, uh, to own the, or have a part of the 197 miles. Under Article 104, Article 1, Section 104, if I'm not mistaken, it's right here. Uh, let me just briefly say it out here. Um, can you, can you anyway, Congressman um, Angelo Camacho, we must work together. We must work with indigenous people, Iman Samoru. You know, if the enemy wants to argue for their interest, let them argue. But this is our land, this is our ocean. And it's never been resolved by the United Nations, the United States government. And uh, in 1986, when the United Nations was officially uh, ended, the law of the sea, the, under former President Reagan, he acknowledged, he acknowledged the law of the sea. That's why he ordered an executive order to, to survey the entire 200 mile uh, EEZ. And that was included in uh, Northern Mariana Islands. So under section 104, he says here, this important document, covenant, the United States will have complete responsibility to and authority with respect to matters relating to foreign affairs that defend that and defenses affecting the Northern Mariana Islands. I have no problem with the defenses, Mr. Speaker and members of this house. I agree with the United States. It's a volatile, especially now where we're in the verge of a nuclear war in the Southeast Asia, but foreign affairs, we never argue correctly we never sat down with the United States government about our 200 mile economic zone. We never. And I attest to that. I spent with my uncles, hours and hours, Uncle Bernard, who was a covenant negotiator. And one thing he told me before he passed away, I said, Uncle, he barely, he rarely speaks, but he one thing he told me, I said, Uncle Bernard, why didn't the Marana's political status discuss the 200 mile? And uh, Ambassador William and the commission says, and the lawyer says, we wait, and later on we discuss. We're still waiting. Mr. Hofschneider, please so, uh, wrap it up, sir. So, Congressman Angelo, I respectfully ask you to withdraw because we are out there petitioning for the Tototano stimulus, and this land and ocean is part of a traditional access. The lobster, the gumsoon, the tatra, the heating, and everything. And that's our land. That's our food. We've survived for several thousand years. And this legislature must address that. We cannot ignore that. It's only six, seven months before election. And we will I'll be out there campaigning to see who supports this Tototanu stimulus. And we're out there. Sus Masi and... Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Herman Tudela, it's going to yield me additional five minutes. Okay, I'll give you that five minutes, but Mr. Tudela, that for the record, you you gave up your. You want to say? My increase are uh, being acknowledged by Mr. Mitchell. So, okay. I think okay. I do, so you will take my five minutes. I'll give you another five minutes, Mr. Hofschneider, and uh, that'll be it. <laughs> Uh, you know, this, uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. And uh, I, I know, uh, Mr. Tyrone, I haven't talked to him for many, many years, but I would love to sit down with him and discuss because he was a freshman attorney at the Attorney General when uh, Livingston, the Attorney General, that took our case to the United States District Court uh, under Judge Munson. And uh, it's really unfortunate that we don't have an attorney that represents the interests of the Tototano. It's only in the interests of the cinema government. And under the United Nations, uh, before they transferred here, I just want to make that reference back. Huh? Before they transferred the uh, the uh, all the entities' responsibilities, keyword responsibilities, and maintaining our trust land, our trust ocean. It's a trust relationship because we are where there were eleven, and I spoke to this many 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 times before. Under the covenant, we were the the first to get out of the Micronesian political status. And we are the 11th trust territory under the United Nations. 
So listen, just listen to the word trust territory. That keyword trust. When the United States, via the United Nations, via the trust territory relationship, gave transferred to all of you here. Now, because it's a continuation, the Commonwealth government in 1978, when uh, January of 1978, when President Carter signed off the Constitution, it created a trust relationship. That trust, we are the beneficiaries. And there's hundreds and thousands when I'm speaking out there that are with me and her and many others. They want that total tunnel stimulus. They want that money that is millions and millions of dollars have been spent for public programs for the entire public of the cinema. We're not against that. We signed the covenant under Section Division 7 or Article 7 of the covenant. It promises higher standard of living. It's very important. We exercise this. The United States government will not tell us, the cinema government, what did we sign? They will tell themselves what did they sign? And we are partner. We're all United States citizens here. So every congressman, every senator, every the governor applauses if you're listening, Lieutenant Governor Papatang, US Delegate Clearly, Attorney General, everyone, mayors and council, exercise this. Because this is what we signed. We didn't sign Organic Act, our Southern Brothers in the Mariana Islands. We didn't sign the American Samoa or Virgin Islands or the Puerto Rico. We signed the covenant and there's mutual consent in there. And it's especially now, Congressman Angelo Camacho, a freshman congressman, if I'm not mistaken, is giving the deal and our secretary for operations and personnel, all the money for exploratory license, grant permits and monies. And you know, there's a non, non water and water activities. They can build condominiums on the water within the definition of water is submerged land is within, under, on, and under, <laughs> below. You know, when you do that, you're infringing on the indigenous domain, indigenous rights. If the legislature as it passed like this, where are we going to go and uh, get the Liling for Kelaguin? Where are we going to go and let the Liling Tulumpu? Where are we going to get the Tio and everything? The Mahungang, the lobster? So, Mr. Speaker and members of this house and the public is listening. It's a time that the speaker, Mr. Speaker, almost 50 years, that this legislature must address this. It's never going to go away. I might not come here in a year, many years from now, I don't know. But someone will stand here and bring up this issue. And we are the indigenous people. And there's 28 beautiful people that came here, ethnic background, races, that came to live in our island. Look at this gentleman back down here. They want to invest and stay. We welcome them, but we must have respect for the indigenous people. Anything has to do with the land, the ocean, the air belongs to the indigenous people. And the United States and our government failed to address that. I want to partner with the United States Department of Defense because it's important that national security and the national defense and political advancement, economic advancement, and the environment, we must protect the environment. But giving the Secretary of Dillon Art, uh, Omar, please, this please for operation. Up, Mr. Hofschneider. It's on, done already? What, what did you say, Mr. Speaker? I said, please wrap it up. Okay, thank you. Giving the Dillon Art Secretary Igis Omar for operations and personnel. This is not his money. It belongs to all Chaboros here, including all Chaboros, Congressman. Castro, Congressman Benjamin, Flores, and all worldwide tomorrows. We must have food self-determination because this covenant did not address food self-determination. And Congressman Kamatsu put forward Holland Uzum, Izombo Bill, Zata Funa Siji, E Public Law Fiber Optic, Public Law 10 that's 14. Very important the fiber Mr. optic. Mr. Hofschneider, please wrap it up. So, uh, fiber optic is submerged land under Mr. the. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. And uh, I hope one day that you invite us to, to talk about this more in your different forum. Thank you very much. Susmasi. Thank you, Mr. Hofschneider. Floor is still open for other members of the public. With nothing further, we move down to item number three, adoption of journals, and we have none. We now move down to item number four, introduction of bills. I'd like to recognize Representative Julie Ogo. Thank you, Speaker. Today I'm officially uh, introducing House Bill number 23-102 to establish the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Price Council to regulate and monitor prices to safeguard the public health, safety, and general welfare of the people of the Sinai, ensure fair pricing pra practices, protect consumers from exploitation, promote market stability, and for all others. Pre-filed by myself and others, I do welcome other members that would like to sponsor, co-sponsor this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Julie Ogo. House Bill number 23-102 is hereby referred to the Standing Committee on Commerce and Tourism. I now like to recognize uh, Representative Manny Castro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to introduce House Bill 23-103 to amend 4 CMC subsection 1305 to exempt services and the sale or exchange of securities and other similar <coughs> assets from gross revenue tax to amend 4 CMC section 1708 to allow rebates for exempted services and for other purposes introduced by myself and several others. Thank you, Representative uh, Manny Kostru. Mr. Speaker, if I may yes. just add a little oh. clarification. Yes. Um, given this time of uh, economic crisis, I think it's it's high time we we take a look at all our previous laws that are really having an, a detrimental economic effect on our community, especially our business community. And I also encourage the public school system you know, there's a significant amount of funding. 25% of our budget goes to education. Um, so I, I encourage the public school system, the Northern Marianas College, NMTI, all our educational providers and training providers to align the curriculum with emerging industries and industries so that our people can also be the sellers. Um, we need to move away from just being the buyers and we also need to know how to be the sellers in this this market and introduce more entrepreneurial education. That's the only way we can get out of this um, situation. It's been done before, it's been proven, not only in, you know, in recent years, but even way back to, to the Japanese administration. Um, the CNMI can compete in a global economy, um, even dating back to the, the garment factory days. So it's time to, to really look into related diversification or any form of diversification because we can't put all our eggs in one basket. And our people need to be at the forefront. Sisus Masi. Sisus Masi, Representative Manny Kostru. Uh, your House Bill 23-103 will be referred to the Committees on Commerce and Tourism and Ways and Means. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize Representative uh, BJ Atta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, formally introducing House Bill number 23-104 to appropriate 5,236,000 of the dividends collected by the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority from the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation for the 25% retirees pension for all retirees of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, introduced by myself and several others and without any objection, Mr. Speaker, by the members, if we can... Go ahead and introduce this as a committee of the whole. Uh, offered by the author uh, no, and with no objection, House Bill 23-104 is hereby introduced uh, by the committee of the whole. Uh, Rep. Atto, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, colleagues. Uh, furthermore, Mr. Speaker, if there's no objection from the colleagues that we place this on calendar for action today. No objection. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Atto. And with uh, no objection, I'd like to recognize the floor leader for the proper motion. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
I now move to suspend Rule 9, Section 8, Referral of Bills and Resolutions, to place House Bill Number 23-104 to appropriate $5,236,000 of the dividends collected by the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority, CEDA, from the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation, CUC, for the 25% retirees pension for all retirees of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands on today's bill calendar, so moved. Thank you. A motion has been made by the floor leader to suspend Rule 9, Section 8, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? All right. All in favor for the motion offered by the floor leader, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. House Bill 23-104 is now placed on today's uh, calendar for action. With nothing further, we move down to House Local Bills. And first on the list, I'd like to recognize Representative Roman Beneventi. Jesus, Mr. Speaker, and thank you. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to introduce this House Local Bill 23-42. Uh, <clears throat> to reappropriate <clears throat> to reappropriate $65,882.45 allotted under Saipan Local Law 20-26, specifically under Business Unit 7190A, $47,500 allotted under Saipan Local Law 22-10, specifically under Business Unit 2007A and $169,475.74 allotted under Saipan Local Law 22-10, specifically under Business Unit 2007B and for other purposes. The purpose of this uh, consolidated uh, repropriation, uh, Mr. Speaker, is to, to finance the Ladder Beach project, the pavement of Ladder Beach project, and the total amount consolidated is uh, 82,000. <clears> the total consolidation is about 82,200 and 200, I'm sorry, 282,000. Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, two hundred and eighty-two thousand four hundred. Uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker. Two hundred eighty-two thousand fifty-eight point nineteen cents for pavement of a uh, ladder beach uh, project. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sidhu Samasi, Representative and I'll recognize uh, Leader Patrick San Nicolas. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is to officially introduce uh, House Law Committee number 43, that's, I mean, 23 that's 43 to amend Tina Local Law 27 and for other purposes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I believe that uh, this one was, uh, I believe this one went through all the process of the 200 some thousand the governor signed into law and the finance came up with a little bit of a short term amount so if i could ask that this one could be um i'm gonna call for a quick recess transmitted to a quick recess
uh, session. Uh, before we went on recess, a representative uh, had the floor and uh, he officially introduced House Local Bill 23-43. Uh, next is uh, Representative Joel Camacho and Representative Malcolm. Are you guys going to? Okay. Uh, Representative uh, Malcolm Omar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introducing House Local Bill 23-44 to appropriate the sum of $66,210 from the fund remaining balance under Saipan Local Law 1924, Business Unit 7177N, <clears throat> for the payment of public recreational facilities, utilities costs, and repairs in Precinct 4, repairs of public park playground equipment in Precinct 4, and repairs of public restroom facilities in Precinct 4, and for fuel and lubrication and for other purposes. Introduced by myself and Vice Speaker Joel Camacho and several others, thank you. Thank you, Representative, uh, Representatives uh, Malcolm Omar and Vice Speaker Joel Camacho. Um, with nothing further, we move down to item number five, introduction of resolutions, we have none. We move down to item number six, messages from the governor and I recognize the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Under item six, messages from the governor, we have governor's communication 2389 through 2391. Thank you, clerk. Under messages from the governor, do we have any discussions? Ready? Okay. Oh, recognize uh, Leader San Nicolas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is to... Uh give thanks to uh, Governor Plasius for signing uh, House Bill 23-40-D1 into law to reappropriate um, 87465 allotted under Tina Local Law 20-7 and $30,000 allotted under Tina Local Law 23-4. Section, subsection 2A, and for all the purposes, if I may continue, Mr. Speaker, uh, thanking the governor for signing to law house local bill 23 33 to increase the local license fee for pachinko slot machines and poker machines and for the second senator, second senator district and for other purposes. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative San Nicolas. Uh, any further? I recognize Representative Atal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just on behalf of the author, uh, under Governor's Communication, uh, Communication 23-91, to thank the administration for signing House Bill Number 23-61 into law, which is now Public Law 23-17. At least uh, a lot of our uh, survivors would now be able to move forward with these uh, potential cases that are being thrown out of the courts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Atal. Any further discussions? Ready? We'll move down to item number seven, seven, Senate Communications, and I recognize the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Under item seven, Senate communi Communications, we have two items, Senate Communication 2380 and 2381. Thank you, clerk. And with that, I recognize the floor leader to accept Senate Communications. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now move that the House accept Senate Communications 2380 and 2381, so that it becomes the property of the House. So moved. Thank you, Floor Leader. A motion has been made to accept Senate communications, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? Okay. All in favor to accept Senate communications, please say aye. aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you, colleagues. And with that, we move down to item number eight, House communications. Uh, clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Under item eight, House Communications, we have several communications from the House. House Communication 23106 through 109. Thank you, Clerk. Any discussions under House Communications? Ready. Okay. Thank you, colleagues. We now move down to item number nine, and I recognize the Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Under item nine, communications from the Judicial Branch, we have one communication to Judicial Branch 20, Communication 23-8. Thank you, Clerk. Any discussions under judicial uh, communications from the judicial branch? Ready? Okay, thank you, colleagues. We now move down to item number 10, communications from departments and agencies. Clerk? 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Under item 10, communications from departments and agencies, we have one item, Department of Agency Communication 23-17. Thank you, Clerk. Any discussions under item number 10? Ready? Okay. Before we move forward, I'd like to refer Department Agency Communication 23-17 from the Department of Public Lands, submitting packet for the public land lease renewal for the legislature's review and consideration. Regarding Suwasu Corporation, DBA Coral Point, Coral Ocean Resorts request renew its lease in Unai Donkulu, Saipan in accordance to Article 11, Section 5D of the NMI Constitution. So uh, this is going to the Committee on Natural Resources. We now move down to item number 11, miscellaneous communications, and I recognize the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Under item 11, miscellaneous communications, we have miscellaneous com communication 2370 through 2372. Thank you, clerk. Any discussions under miscellaneous discussions? Uh, miscellaneous communications, I'm sorry. Ready? Okay, thank you, members. We now move down to item number 12, reports of standing committees, and I recognize the clerk. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. Under item 12, reports of standing committees, we have two standing committee reports ready for House action. Standing committee report 2373 and 2374. Thank you, Clerk. And with that, I recognize the floor leader for the uh, action on the committee reports. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move for the adoption of standing committee report number 2373, reporting on House Bill number 2397, entitled to amend certain provisions of the Commonwealth Public Utilities Commission Act of 2006 and for other purposes, the House Committee on Public Utilities, Transportation and Communications recommends the House pass the bill in its current form. So moved. Thank you, Floor Leader. A motion has been made for the adoption of Standing Committee Report number 23-73 and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? Okay, all in favor to adopt the Standing Committee Report, please say aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. Thank you, colleagues. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now move for the adoption of Standing Committee Report number 2374, reporting on House Bill number 2399, entitled to require all vessels and or motorboats to possess and utilize a global positioning system, GPS. Your House Committee on Public Utilities, Transportation, and Communications recommends that the House pass the bill in its current form. So moved. Thank you, Floor Leader. A motion has been made for the adoption of Standing Committee Report 23-74, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? Okay, all in favor to adopt the Standing Committee Report, please say aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. Thank you, Floor Leader. Thank you, colleagues. And with that, we now move down to item number 13, Reports of special and conference committees. I recognize the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have under item 13, reports of special and conference committee. We have two com special committee reports ready for house action, 23-2 and 23-3. Thank you, clerk. And with that, I recognize the floor leader, floor leader for the motions. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move for the adoption. Sorry. I move for the adoption of Special Committee Report Number 23-2, the Special Committee on Federal Assistance and Disaster-Related Funding. My majority vote reports instances of contempt to the House. Pursuant to Title I, Section 1306 of the Commonwealth Code, the committee directs the Speaker to certify the contempt statement to the CNMI Attorney General for Mr. Robert Trevilla's prosecution in the Commonwealth Superior Court, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Floor Leader. Floor Leader has made a motion for the adoption of Special Committee Report Number 23-2, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? Okay, and with that, Clerk, please call the roll. Representative Aldon? Yes. Representative Vatal? Yes. Representative Benaventi? Again. Representative Angelo Komatsu? Yes. Representative Diego Komatsu? Yes. Representative Joel Komatsu? Again. Representative Vicente Komatsu? Yes. Representative Kostru? Again. Representative Joseph Flores? Yes. Representative Marissa Flores? Yes. Representative Ogo? 
Yes. Representative Omar? Hongan. Representative Probes? Yes. Representative Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Speaker? Aware. Right. Mr. Speaker, all 15 members present voted yes. Thank you, Clerk. And with all 15 members present voting yes, the special committee reports hereby adopted. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move for the adoption of special committee report number 23-3, the special committee on federal assistance and disaster-related funding by majority vote reports instances of contempt to the House pursuant to Title I, Section 1306 of the Commonwealth Code. Committee directs the speaker to certify the contempt statement to the seat of my attorney general for Ms. Selena Sapp's prosecution in the Commonwealth Superior Court. So moved. Thank you, floor leader. Motion has been made by the floor leader for the adoption of special committee report number 23-3, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? Okay, clerk, please call the roll. Representative Aldan? Yes. Representative Vato? Yes. Representative Benaventi? Good. Representative Angelo Komatsu? Yes. Representative Diego Komatsu? Yes. Representative Joel Komatsu? Good. Representative Senti Komatsu? Yes. Representative Kostro? Good. Representative Joseph Flores? Yes. Representative Marissa Flores? Yes. Representative Vogel? Yes. Representative Omar? Good. Representative Probes? Yes. Representative Nicholas? Mr. Speaker? Our. Mr. Speaker, all 15 members present voted yes. Thank you, Clerk. With all 15 members present voting yes, the committee report, the special committee reports hereby adopted. Thank you, colleagues. We now move down to item number 14, unfinished business. We have none. Item number 15, the resolution calendar, we have none. We now move down to item number 16, the bill calendar, and I recognize the floor leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before moving for passage on first and final reading, I move to suspend Rule 7, Section 9, Committee Reports and Other Documents, and Rule 9, Section 9 and 10. So moved. Thank you, Floor Leader. A motion has been made by the Floor Leader to suspend uh, Rule 7, Section 9, and Rule 9, Sections 9 and 10, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready. Okay. All in favor for the motion made by the floor leader, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now move in for first and final reading passage. I'll call for a quick recess.
before we went to recess, we were on bill calendar. We uh, we uh, voted to suspend uh, pertinent rules, um, and now we're now we will be uh, we're on the motions to uh, act on uh, bills on the bill calendar. And with that, I recognize the floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now move for the passage of House Bill Number Twenty Three Ninety Seven. A bill for an act to amend certain provisions of the Commonwealth Public Utilities Commission Act of 2006 and for other purposes, so moved. Thank you, Floor Leader. A motion has been made for the passage of House Bill 23-97 and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready. Clerk, please call the roll. Rep. Vandal. Yes. Rep. Fatal. Yes. Rep. Benaventi. Good. Rep. Vangelo Komatsu. Yes. Absent Diego Komatsu? Yes. Absent Joel Komatsu? Good. Absent Vicente Komatsu? Yes. Absent Castro? Good. Absent Joseph Flores? Yes. Absent Marisa Flores? Yes. Absent Avogo? Yes. Absent Avomar? Good. Absent Approach? Yes. Absent Sinaclas? Mr. Speaker? Yes. Mr. Speaker, all 15 members present voted yes. Thank you, Clerk. With all 15 members present voting yes, House Bill 23-97 hereby passes the House. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now move for passage. House Bill number 2399, a bill for an act to require all vessels and or motorboats to possess and utilize a global positioning system. So moved. Thank you, Floor Leader. A motion has been made for the passage of House Bill number 23-99, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? Thank you, members. Clerk, please call the roll. Representative Valdan? Yes. Representative Vato? Yes. Representative Benaventi? Good. Representative Angelo Komatsu? Yes. Representative Diego Komatsu? Yes. Representative Joel Komatsu? Good. Representative Vicente Komatsu? Yes. Representative Costro? Good. Representative Joseph Flores? Yes. Representative Marissa Flores? Yes. Representative Ogo? Yes. Representative Omar? Hungan. Representative Probes? Yes. Representative Sinaclas? Mr. Speaker? I would. Mr. Speaker, all 15 members present voted yes. Thank you, Clerk. With all 15 members present voting yes, House Bill number 23-99 hereby passes the House. Floor Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And now I move for passage on first and final reading. House Bill number 23-104, a bill for an act to appropriate $5,236,000 of the dividends collected by the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority, CEDA, C -E -D -A, from the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation, CUC, for the 25% retirees pension for all retirees of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, so moved. Thank you, Floor Leader. A motion has been made for the passage of House Bill number 23-104, and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Recognize Representative Atto. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, a floor amendment has been passed out to, to all the members. Uh, may I ask the members to just please follow? Just to easier, I'm kind of going to go backwards on that. Uh, just the first portion would be to remove Section 5, and numbers will be corrected so so we really will reflect this number uh, section five uh, savings clause section six and effective date will be section seven and under section one after on line five after the word livelihood period to insert last comma that the legis the legislature finds that the sector of finance shall remit payments to the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority for the repayment of the five million two hundred thirty-six thousand dollars. The intent of the legislature, the legislature, is that these funds retain their local nature, and after repayment, these funds may be used in the future to address exclusively local matters of the third senatorial district. So move, Mr. Speaker. Second. Thank you, Representative Atta. Um, a floor amendment has been offered by Representative Atta and was uh, further elaborated and it has been seconded. Any discussions on the floor amendment? Ready? Ready. Ready. All in favor for the floor amendment offered by Representative Atta, please say aye. Aye. 
All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. The floor amendment is hereby adopted. And now we move back to the main motion, back to House Bill 23-104, House Draft 1. Recognize Representative Atal. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. And uh, thank you, colleagues, for uh, agreeing to introduce this legislation as a committee of the whole. And thank you for supporting the uh, floor amendment. As we all know that the CEDA monies are actually local monies that belong to the third senatorial district. But after meeting with the administration two weeks ago, both the House and the Senate met with the administration and we are in, in a really bad financial situation. They're put in into positions right now into making cuts. A lot of the uh, retirees 25% pension was being paid out utilizing the reprogramming authority that the administration had in has in its power the the budget act for 2024 gave him 100 percent reprogramming authority and he still has that unfortunately the funds are depleting pretty quick and on top of that they still need to to um satisfy the 25 percent to the public school system and the payment for our current employees in the government a lot of our employees in the government have already taken a 10% reduction in their, I mean, sorry, 10 hour reduction in their pay, which is more than 10% of their total pay. And during this meeting uh, with the administration, we had to make a decision from our end. We have to find funds to assist the administration in its general uh, obligations to its people, not just to the retirees, but to the current employees of the government and also to address the vendors that need to be paid. We are receiving uh, payments back from whatever was used up during COVID or during U2, but those monies are just replenishing accounts that were, were stripped from those accounts. The administration, with their power, can actually do an across-the-board cut right now if they so choose to, but with this legislation, we're giving ourselves a piece of that authority to make sure that we assist in producing some sort of financial stability, in this case, the retirees 25%, so that the administration can concentrate its obligation to its current employees and its other obligations. And the speaker, along with the Senate president, uh, in a joint letter with the administration is sent out already to the general public and to our bodies that we need to make some decisions and some drastic changes. This, this legislation will assist and it'll deter any across the board cuts, maybe smaller in the future, but we need to help in making sure that our current employees are also not cut additionally. We also we all know that the current budget only pays for personnel costs. It doesn't have operational costs. The operational cost was split out. The 100% reprogramming authority only allowed $500,000 in free money to be distributed. And the administration has been using that for operational costs within the executive branch. And so with that being said, it hurts a lot for the third senatorial district to take away monies that can be utilized to build our infrastructure in regards to our utilities in the third senatorial district. And by doing that, we will also be able to assist the first and second senatorial district in their utilities, because we all know that the, the utility situation in the third senatorial district is much larger than the first and second senatorial district and the cost of maintenance is here in the third senatorial district. But our power plant's still running, we still have power, we still have water, we still have uh, wastewater treatment. If we don't act on this legislation at the soonest, the guarantee is the 25% will be reduced if not suspended by April 15. That's why we need this legislation passed. And we hope that when it gets to the Senate, that they do the same thing. The greatest thing about putting it in a House bill is that every single member in this House and every single member in the Senate will be a part in taking this vote rather than only the third senatorial district making this decision for everybody else. 
but we all know that we want to we want to help the retirees at the same time we don't want to cut further our government employees and with this legislation we'll sacrifice the third senatorial district at this point so that we can make sure that the retirees receive their full pension moving forward and that the administration wouldn't have to worry about that obligation from this period moving forward and they can entertain their current obligations within the administration and with that being said to the retirees this this will prevent any cuts and we hope that the senate can act the, act on this legislation at the soonest april 15 is rolling around pretty close and we need to get this out and get to the governor's desk so that they can move the funds to the settlement fund to pay the 25 percent uh, with that being said mr speaker i thank you for the time thank you colleagues for supporting the legislation and i'm ready to vote Thank you, Representative Atto. Uh, recognize Representative Julie Ogo. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I would like to uh, uh, express our sincere uh, appreciation to the third senatorial um, um, representative, B.J. Atto, uh, Atto, for this uh, bill, for authoring this bill, and also to the administration uh, for including uh, first senatorial district in the distribution or continuation of the 25% for the retirees. It's been very difficult to identify any fundings at all for our people in Rhoda. And <clears throat> an example would be, my father is 72 years old. He just turned 72 this month. He's the sole provider for the house. My mom is not retired and she's uh, only receiving a few hundred dollars on her social security pension. And with that, with the current uh, you know, uh, inflation, uh, power, you know, fees going up, fuel, gas fuel, you know, it's going to be very difficult, not just for my father, but the other retire retirees that are at the end of their livelihood. You know, uh, we need to make sure that we enhance their, their lives while they're still here. And um, we appreciate um, the people of the 3rd Senatorial District for their patience and understanding and to give us time to recuperate our, you know, our situation in Rhoda. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Representative Ogo. I recognize Representative Roman Benevent. Thank you, and Mossi, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity for, with regards to the bill that uh, Representative Fato has introduced, it is really a, a significant bill that, that would really help. As we know, like what he has alluded earlier, that we all went and attend the, the meeting with the governor last couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, uh, he highlighted that the situation that we're in, the fiscal situation that we're in. And uh, with this bill, you know, it said that it will take out funding from the Saipan Northern Island legislative delegation to accommodate all the, the other uh, the first senatorial district and the second senatorial district at the same time. So to me, yeah, I believe that it's one Marianas, ne? one Sinemai. And we should be helping each other if we can. But at the same token also, the first senatorial district and the second senatorial district would also consider that as, as much because we are also sacrificing our our effort here as the Saipan Northern Island delegation that third senatorial district. So with that said, with this bill, I feel really responsible because this this bill was really to also to accommodate PSS. And I felt responsible with that 25% for PSS because at that time when uh, the twenty five percent was born it was a legislative initiative introduced by myself and it was ratified by the people and it passed. And now we're having a problem with regards to providing educational process to our kids on the island. And with that said, I really feel responsible on that. And that's why I'm supporting this bill 100%. Not only that, the retirees that we have, 
our demographic, our retirees demographic here in Saipan are more recipient than the first and second senatorial district combined. So by passing this bill, it really alleviates a lot of the pressure for the administration to, to try to accommodate and at least to try to stay afloat with regards to this type of uh, uh, bill. If we do this and make sure that this thing will pass all the way through, we have to also understand that, you know, we are helping each other. No matter how we do it, we help each other. And not only that, if we don't do it and we're stuck with the fiscal situation that we have, the administration stuck with the fiscal situation, we are in trouble with regards to that because we still, our people will still be more here on Saipan than Rhoda and Tinian. So we still get the, the worst of it. So by this bill, it's a solution finder. It's a bill that would find solution to, to move ahead and try to be what we can do as much as we can. And Noah, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Then to the first senatorial district, then the second senatorial district. Zau na bay sang onyam juta gini. Maila jata fana ajuda. Mostai ji kumu maktulu gi seni di ibiu manyukut. Put fabot. Maila jata fana ajuda. Sagwa kumu maulu ni biu ulu gi gi seni manyukut. For I don't know what interest blow manyukut. Pus inoa jawab efisien amju maila jata fana ajuda. Saman piniti aman pariwi na tauto. Si Jus Masi, Mr. Speaker. Jus Masi, Representative Benaventi, Representative uh, Marissa Flores. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and in line with my colleagues from the third and first senatorial district, I don't know if there's anything else more I can say. Um, they have really um, spoke about the sentiment of everybody here. Um, it did not take me long as a representative to um, support the bill offered by Rep. Atel. Um, we're all here to find a solution to help everybody in the Commonwealth, regardless of um, their category as retirees, um, you know, individuals with disabilities, we're all part of this community. Like Rep. Beneventi mentioned, we're one commonwealth. And as much as we debate on issues that um, appear to divide our commonwealth, that is not the end uh, and that is not the intent of the conversation. The conversation we're having and we've had was find a way for all senatorial districts to come together and provide solutions that support everyone in each senator, senatorial district's community. Yes, the third sen senatorial district has suffered, but once, never once in the history have we complained about it's too much for the first and second senatorial districts because we're all one people. But right now during these difficult times, we have collectively as a group in the Commonwealth as people have to do the right thing. And the right thing is to pass this bill offered by Rep. Atel, um, and several others, because we have to help our retirees. It's our obligation. And thank you Rep. Beneventi for expressing um, your influence on the 25% uh, because a lot of our conversations and debate um, come down to that. But for you to acknowledge um, your influence on that, that says a lot about where you are and how you would like to offer solutions moving forward. And I think moving forward together as one commonwealth, that should be the case. We all were here and sworn in to protect 
the Commonwealth, uphold the constitution of that. And we're trying our best, all of us, but we cannot do it when one is hearing that we're trying to divide the Commonwealth. We are not. We cannot divide the Commonwealth because if we do, then nothing passes, just as Rep. Beneventi had mentioned. So I urge our colleagues in the Senate to please pass with urgency House Bill 23-104-HD1 because our retirees deserve their pension. And we took an oath to do whatever we possibly can to protect the welfare of all people in our Commonwealth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield. Sidhu Smasi, Representative Marissa Flores, recognized Representative uh, Malcolm Omar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to touch on um, this bill that we're you know, discussing to, to help the retirees. I thank the author and everyone who's supporting it, and I hope that we all do support it. I think this is just an example of the solutions that this government, our government, is working on to address for the people. We get calls, we get complaints. They're unfavorable, they're unpopular, but I just, this goes to show that this is just one of the small things that we sacrifice as members of this government, as members of this administration. We have gone into very, very significant engagements with all leaders of all branches of our government. Natsuka, the popular, right? Natsuka man, the uh, Ochubanda, the Gisenet and stuff, the man agreement with the House, we still, we break into conference, we compromise, but we still get the issues addressed. So, you know, a lot of issues <clears throat> uh, concerning infrastructure, the, the projects on Beach Road to the sewer rehabilitation projects from the north to the south, every day, gua, gua complain, every day, Low, do we want? We're moving forward. Ne, istigisha tsota ta address that ta keke adure community dot that ta keke na litoto na gito do banda. We're all working together to see that these issues that wala la la lo amzu because ano natan ten twenty years back mas adit problema niya. Lo pagu now that ma ma address that ma assististi Publico still guasha man la 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 lo guasha complaints never ending todo tempo we will have all these complaints the tasungan ha I mean there's nothing we can do but I just like to remind people that this government this administration ni todo siet mangai pati we are trying our best no the istigi this uh e but I withdraw 25%. The option is you no, know, they would stay, the state total, the active employees, is the man what is it, 10 hours. No, low. They still come to work, they're still contributing. The the most important thing I believe our people we should really practice is to be contributing members of society. No, it's ti para punsasangana baba, punsasangana iti matotsogi. Lo, how can you help with the situation that we're facing? And we may be, or they may, everyone may be saying that we're moving slow to address these issues, but we're really moving. Okay, ti man ni dit, ti dormant hira dan manyasagait kumu umang. Low Tatataga Tamanum Sina and I just stress and hopefully Makumprendi Todu ni Toto na Natsuka Didi Padispashu in Tatataga Mona. And again, so Talum Bright to my colleagues, Sidus Masi and uh, colleague Atau, Sidus Masi with this, you know, Uncle Roman Tafanadira Unudan Ochu. This is not only a Saipan issue, 
a Tinian issue, but a cinema issue. No, the GST, like I said, it's unpopular, unfavorable. Lo, debe na tatsogi. Again, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. And I thank everybody here present. And I look forward to voting for the passage of this bill. Thank you. To do Masi, Representative Omar, I recognize Representative uh, Diego Camacho. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I echo uh, everybody's sentiments on this uh, legislation. I'd like to thank uh, our good colleague, Rep. Atta, for introducing 23-104. As we all know, we all know retirees. And they depend solely on their pension as their means of, you know, their livelihood. Not to mention their dependents. And it's my hope that our good colleagues in the Senate consider to fast track this said legislation, so that our, our retirees' lifeline continues uninterrupted. And I hope to say that any cuts to our retirees, twenty-five percent will remain off the table should this legislation pass. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues for supporting this. Thank you, Representative Diego Camacho. Any further discussions? Recognize Representative Vincent Aldan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, you know, I wanna thank uh, Representative uh, BJ Atto for uh, you know introducing this bill um <clears throat> what am i about to say is probably going to be political suicide but i'll say it anyways because i would rather be sitting here being honest than not to bring out uh, my true sentiment i do not know that this you know the, the the word sacrifice have been you know like i said earlier has been used up chopped up flipped all over the place and you know just completely overused no no I really do understand uh, the reason why we have to do this. You know, do I like it? No, I really don't. You know, but does it need to be done? Yes, it does. Okay. If, you know, if you can compare, you know, you add, you know, uh, the Senatorial District 1 and 2 together, you know, they're, the population it doesn't even come close to the third. If you had the, you know, economic output, you know, of the first and second, you know, it's not even going to compare to the third. But be that as it may, regardless of what happens, if we don't support this bill as is, you know, every district will suffer. And that's, of course, not acceptable. The... If we decide not to support it and the money stays on the Senate third, third senatorial district, it'll still hurt our retirees. You know. So if we as a legislature, you know, and then a third senatorial district is willing to 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 sacrifice and put it put this all on the line, I ask that you know the first and senatorial district would order, would also consider what the third senatorial district needs. Now, I believe that this solution is a temporary solution. It's a band-aid solution. Because what are we going to do tomorrow? This thing is not going to last. And I hope that, you know, with, you know, together with uh, House Bill 23103, you know, that it will pass because that's a revenue generator. You know, along with some other bills. Now, the reason why we're in this predicament, because we're just financially, our financial house is in complete disarray. There's no money. And we cannot keep the, the status quo as is. And whether we like it or not, the executive branch, you know, as much as it's trying to find out where to get money and whatnot, it also has to reduce its spending. Okay. And like I said, what I'm about to say is going to be hard, but the government needs to reduce itself. Its biggest expense is personnel. So if we want to get a solution, our best solution is to cut government jobs, period. 
whether we like it or not, somebody has to go. If I lose this, the people seat that I'm sitting on right now on this upcoming election, so be it. But at least I'm honest. The government has to do its job. The executive branch has to do its job. They have to cut costs. You know, this five million is what? A drop in the bucket. Like I said, what's going to happen next year? Because once this snail money is done, you know, how long did it take no Sida to come up with this, you know, 25 uh, or $5 million, you know, dividend? Are we going to have the same thing next year? Or the following year after that? And are we, is the third senatorial district going to keep sacrificing? So the executive government or branch has to do its part. And they got to reduce their spending. They got to control their spending. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Vincent Aldana. Any further discussions? Ready? I'll recognize the Vice Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to also echo the sentiments of the, the members. Um, and I'll, um, most especially thank uh, Rep. BJ for this bill. Uh, my dad, too, is a retiree. <sighs> And I'm not supporting the legislation because my dad's retired, but I do understand that there are a lot of a lot of this uh, retirement or retirees out there that are suffering. They're calling our offices. Uh, they're also worried the deadline for April 15 is impending. So I'd like to take this opportunity to also urge the Senate so maybe they can fast track this bill. It's a much needed res uh, legislation, and I do believe it's going to help our our retirees and help us move forward in this fiscal year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Vice Speaker. I now recognize the floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, of course, want to also uh, echo my sentiments and and thank the author of this bill and uh, for for putting this together and for really always thinking of the retirees, all of us here also always think of the retirees. This is, um, I'm sure we're going to push and pass for this bill, but there is tremendous sacrifice that we make and it's just not, it's just not being shown because we don't always show it. But I know a lot of us have been uh, doing everything we can. And I'm very grateful for this bill because everything helps. And this is a, a big amount, but it's still not, everything that we need. There's still going to be more sacrifices that we'll be seeing in the future if things don't turn around um, quickly. But uh, to my good friend and colleague, uh, Congressman B.J. Atal, thank you so much for this and, and know that we always appreciate the great work you do, sir. I, I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Floor Leader. Any further discussions? Ready? Okay, clerk, please call the roll for the passage of House Bill Number Twenty Three One Hundred Four HD One. Representative Valdon. Yes. Representative Atal. Yes. Representative Benaventi. Ungan. Representative Angelo Komatsu. Yes. Representative Diego Komatsu. Yes. Representative Joel Komatsu. Ungan. Representative Vicente Komatsu. Yes. Representative Costro. Ungan. Representative Joseph Flores. Representative Marissa Flores? Yes. Representative Vogel? Yes. Representative Omar? Hungan. Representative Pro? Yes. Representative Siniklas? Yes. Mr. Speaker? I will. Mr. Speaker, all 14 members present voted yes. Thank you, Clerk. With 14 members present voting yes, House Bill 23-104, House Draft 1, hereby passes the House. Thank you, colleagues. And with nothing further, we move down to item number 17, miscellaneous business. Any recognize uh, Representative Manny Castro? Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'd also like to thank Mr. Um, the uh, individuals that came up and provided public comment for um, the digital economy house bill that I was introducing, HB uh, 23103, I believe. Um, I also wanted to point out that uh, there are also um, 
a lot of laws that that we're we're needing to take a look at. Um, just yesterday, I spoke to one of the uh, business owners, um, and some are the, some of the challenges are the fees. Um, and you know, when I go into this, I want to explain. For example, you have a a small business that sells fish in um, across the courthouse. It's a mobile fish mart. But then if they're going to sell fish in Garapan, even though they're a mobile fish mart, they have to apply for a separate business license for Garapan, which kind of defeats the concept of, you know, the mobility aspect. Um, so there's a lot of laws that we really need to take a look at, just like the one that was introduced today. It's, it's, uh, it's looking at laws that don't make sense today. And, and what we really need to do is try to reduce the, the startup costs in the beginning or the process in the beginning. So reduce some of these fees. And where we're going to collect most of the revenue is when the business is succeeding hence the BGR. And I thank you uh, all, all colleagues for, for passing some of those bills. One of them is the, uh, a bill to reduce startup costs and it's still in the Senate and I'm not putting them in check, but you know, having a lot of businesses that have to pay fees, for example, the annual license fee for LLC, it's a $10 a day penalty which can add up. If your business is not making money at all, like it's it's losing sales because of this economic situation and you cannot afford to pay for the the full renewal because it's, you know, it's expensive, but to tack on a $10 a day uh, charge, the state of Utah, I believe it's only $10 period for being late, right? So I even, uh, even in speaking with... Uh, um, assistant AG for tax and rev. Um, he kind of agreed with some of these, these revenue practices of, you know, we're, we're not supposed to make money off of the fees in the beginning. We should be making those collections at the end in terms of tax, tax and revenue. So, um, I, you know, uh, even with that, in the case of that business license, you walk into some businesses and they have six business licenses when they really should only have two. But some of these laws require them to get six. I mean, it's a small island. This is Saipan. So a lot of businesses are also, you know, it, it might be easier just to open up and set up shop on Tinian which, or Rhoda because they, they don't have to do some of the regulatory requirements. A company that's going to, put up a sign, you know, like they already got the payment and they're about to install a sign on a road for, let's say, public health. They have to apply for another license to, to be a contractor, a contractor license, but they already have a business license, you know, <clears throat> as a sign company, a sign. So we, you know, I, I look for everyone's support in really uh, looking at a lot of these laws that are a hindrance to the economic development of small business, especially. And at the same time, 25%, I'm going to reiterate that 25% is a lot of money. And that we're providing to, for example, the public school system. So we need to also embed curriculum that is going to help our people be self-sufficient and financially literate. Um, had had a lot of the retirees been given the information about Roth IRA accounts and all of these investment opportunities prior to the fall of the retirement fund, a lot of them will be in a better financial position. But, you know, somewhere along, we dropped the ball. But for the amount of money that we're spending, let's make our money work for us and not us for work for our money. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Manny Castro, uh, Representative Marissa Flores. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Rep. Castro, for that. I think it's important that we always remember the small business um, and their contributions to the Commonwealth. Um, and in line in that, in line with that, um, I must um, 
say a couple words and if you um, can, please be patient with me, Mr. Speaker. This is in regard to the April 2nd um, hearing with the CCC. So my comment will be in line um, with this upcoming meeting. And once again, on behalf of the people of the Commonwealth and the third senatorial district, I must state my concerns for the failure of the fiduciary responsibilities that the commission board has um, displayed within many, many years. And in order for the public to understand where I'm going with my um, comment, we must go back. So let me take you back to the general public and to this body. But first I'm gonna take some ex excerpts from the Bloomberg, Bloomberg article, February 15, 2018. Saipan. Population 48,000 is nevertheless American soil with US dollars, US mail, and US laws. But the place has seemed less and less like America since 2014, when a Chinese casino operator arrived with near total impunity, turned Saipan into a backdoor to the US financial system. At a temporary storefront, the company, Imperial Pacific International Holdings Limited, was somehow handling more than two billion a month in VIP bets. At the construction site, it was building our gargantuan casino with a crew of hundreds of Chinese, scores of them working illegally on tourist visas. So many laborers were getting hurt that Rohingya's colleagues, and Rohingya's is an individual who was present during this time, began keeping unofficial spreadsheet separate from standard hospital records, a grim catalog of broken bones, lacerations, puncture wounds, dislocated limbs, and eyes penetrated by flying metal. The dead man Rohinger was, was of course talking about wasn't a tourist who stumbled, stumbled over a railing. He was a builder and he had a name and he plummeted from the scaffold on March 23rd, 2017. His colleagues hadn't called 911. Instead, they pulled the work clothes off his broken body in a clumsy attempt to obscure his identity. The less the rest of the Commonwealth learned about the casino, the better. Mr. Speaker, may I continue? In 2025, or I'm sorry, in 2015, House Bill 1995 HD1, to clarify the powers of the CCC and to make needed changes to the Commonwealth Code given the unique regulatory oversight of the casino industry in the Commonwealth and for other purposes. In this bill, the authors included language to read. The commission shall have the authority to require developers, owners, or finance, financers completion bonds in any amount agreeable to the commission prior to or during the construction of any facility. The commission shall have the authority to require the casino licensee to obtain bonds in any amount deemed reasonable to the commission and of such quality satisfactory to the commission. And it reads, and it continues on. But for time, I will not finish. However, on September 20, um, September 30, 2015, by a vote of 13 to 7, Floor Amendment House Bill 1995 was offered and adopted, but removed that provision. This is an important piece of history because seven individuals who voted against the removal of that provision had every intention to protect and acted in the best interest of the Commonwealth and the people. Mr. Speaker, may I please continue? In 2017, the Federal Bureau of Investigation raided the construction site of Imperial Pacific's casino in Saipan over a federal violation of the workplace visa system following the death of that construction worker. In April 2019, the United States Department of Labor secured a $3.3 million judgment against IPI for wage and overtime violations. In September 2019, the Equal Opportunity Commission filed a lawsuit against IPI for sexual harassment and discrimination. In November 2019, the FBI raided the offices of Imperial Pacific for evidence of money laundering and wire fraud. 
and the federal grand jury subpoenaed the company regarding a corruption probe involving links with the Northern Mariana Islands administration at that time. In March 2020, Imperial Pacific disclosed that the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network was probing it for possible violation of the Bank Secrecy Act. In June 2020, the Commonwealth Casino Commission of the Northern Mariana Islands announced that it was seeking to suspend IPI's casino license for non-payment of money owed to a community benefit fund. Imperial Pacific's overnight domination of Saipan has generated deep unease among the island citizens, many of whom have been convinced that their home has been bought. The company, they believe, set out to take over a little piece of America, politicians and all. Given the billion dollars at stake, it's not surprising some would try. What is shocking is that so far, back then and now, it seems to be working. Author is my Matthew Campbell. Public Law 18... 48 was signed on April 1st, 2014. The irony. On April 2nd, 2024, the Casino Commission is scheduled to meet at 10 a.m. to discuss the revocation of IPI's license. 10 years after public law, I'm sorry, 1838 was signed to authorize, establish, and regulate an exclusive gaming license within the Commonwealth. If the commission decides not to revoke their license, the Commonwealth and its people should recommend to the governor to immediately take action and remove the members of the commission. It's time to move forward. $73 million from IPI that is due will allow some breathing, breathing space during these difficult times. And lastly, Regarding the recent emergency temporary restraining order filed by IPI, claiming that their due process has been violated, the Commonwealth and its people have been violated and denied too. Once again, it's been denied and IPI has caused a blemish way, way after June 20, 2009, when the federal government took over our immigration. This blemish now stains our ability to invite true investors, not investors that do not respect, do not safeguard, do not protect, and have established themselves as poor investors Poor, have established themselves as having poor investor standards. Mr. Speaker and colleagues, Imperial Pacific needs to do the right thing and pay the $7 million. The lack of respect of human life and the lives of the people of the Commonwealth is at stake. I ask the general public to join me on April 2nd, 2024 at the Commonwealth Casino Commission office at 10 a.m. to express your frustration, express your desire for the CCC to finally come to its conclusion and revoke the license should the courts deny the emergency TRO. And with that, Mr. Speaker, thank you for your time and colleagues, thank you for your patience. I yield. Thank you, Representative Marissa Flores. Any further under miscellaneous? Okay, with nothing further, we move down to announcements. Any discussion under announcements? Recognize Representative Atta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just to announce that we will be uh, holding the um, conference committee meeting on Wednesday, April 3rd, next week, uh, to address the uh, line of credit legislation, Mr. Speaker. I will come up with the memo and the time. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Atau. Any further under announcements? Ready? I'll recognize Representative Marissa Flores. I just like to um, 
um, express a happy Easter to the people of the Commonwealth. Um, it um, obviously is a time um, of reflection um, and new beginnings. So I wish on behalf of um, the 23rd legislature, my family and my children, I like to greet every one of you in the Commonwealth a uh, happy Easter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield. Thank you, Representative Marissa Flores. I recognize Representative uh, Diego Camacho. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are we meeting anytime next week? Session wise? Yeah. Uh, no, not okay. that I have. So I guess I'll just make an some announcements. On April 4th at 5 p.m., is the Child Abuse and Neglect Awareness Month proclamation that will be at the Capitol Baseball Field, followed by the Strikeout Child Abuse um, Softball Tournament. On April 6th, Saturday, uh, Walk for Autism will take place at the American Memorial Park at 4 o'clock. And on Sunday, April 7th, please uh, join us for the San Vicente uh, Fiesta taking place on Sunday. And happy Easter to all of you colleagues and those listening. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Jesus Masi, no Representative Diego Camacho. Any further under announcements? Okay, with nothing further, before we, uh, after we adjourn, um, we have a special guest. Well, she was sitting in the gallery. I think she stepped out. She'll be probably making her way back. Uh, she is the great granddaughter of uh, Matsue. So um, after the, uh, she's doing a little tour here. And um, after the session, I would like to request if we could do a photo op. Her name is Miss Rie Soma, the great granddaughter of Matsue. So after we adjourn, um, if we can just take a group photo, okay? And with that, and nothing further, further under announcement, I recognize the floor leader for adjournment. Subject to the call of the speaker, I move for adjournment. Thank you. A motion has been made for adjournment and it has been seconded. Any discussions? Ready? All in favor to adjourn, please say aye. aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Sessions adjourned. Thank you, colleagues.